I don't think I'm breaking new ground by saying that the El Reno tornado is one of the worst, if not the worst, disasters in storm chasing history. On May 31st, 2013, a large and damaging tornado struck just west of Oklahoma City, south of El Reno. This tornado quickly expanded into the largest tornado ever recorded, an unimaginable 2.6 miles wide. This rapid expansion, along with a very deviant path, ended up causing the deaths of four storm chasers, the first tornado to do so. Winds of over 290 miles an hour were recorded inside of the tornado, putting it up there with Bridge Creek Moor as the fastest tornado ever. But it only got an EF3. Well, not at first. The tornado was originally rated as an EF5, but in late 2013, it was downgraded to an EF3. This change sparked controversy regarding the EF scale and the strength of the El Reno tornado, which is still debated all these years later. While lots of people didn't understand this change at first, it made a little more sense once the EF scale was taken into consideration. The EF scale, or Enhanced Fujita scale, rates tornadoes based on the damage inflicted, not necessarily how fast the winds are. I think Picos Hank put it best. So basically, if the core of a tornado harboring winds over 200 miles per hour doesn't impact any structures, but its outer bands knock down the lawn chair you left out at the fishing hole, that tornado is an EF0. The El Reno tornado did not inflict enough damage on the ground to support an EF5 rating, even if the wind speeds measured did so. With an EF5, you'd expect some sort of ground scouring on the ground, evident with many other EF5 tornadoes such as Philadelphia, Jarrell, Moore, and some others, but this was not seen with El Reno, at least not to an extent to justify an EF5 rating. Other evidence points to trees not being debarked, no house sustaining EF5 damage, etc. The highest wind speeds, at least what people point to as evidence of it being an EF5, come from the sub vortices orbiting inside the whole tornado. These wind speeds were likely for a short period of time, at most a few seconds, and no buildings were impacted by any of these insanely fast sub vorts. If the tornado had occurred even a few miles to the north, it would have gone directly through the town of El Reno. This would have 100% earned it an EF5 rating, and it would have been one of the worst tornado events, especially since more had just occurred 11 days prior. That's going to be it for this video. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. This was just a video I wanted to make that I thought about in class, and I hope you enjoyed it. More tornado tracks are likely to come soon. Goodbye.